millions of dollars, and that could get significantly higher in the oper if the operation drags on for weeks or maybe months. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Paul Westcott is the host of White House Brief. Mercedes Colin is a Fox News legal analyst, and Fox Business's Robert Gray joins us from the newsroom. Paul, let's start with you. These dollars and cents, they really add up. We have no idea how long this is going to go on for. Absolutely. I never knew before this how much munitions cost, specifically bombs, 20 to 30,000. Some of those Tomahawk missiles, 1.5 million. So these are very wow. costly things. And then we've got the cost potentially skyrocketing into the billions, according to the Pentagon. So, I mean, honestly, this is something we have to examine as part of it. When we have no money in the Treasury, we really have to be looking at cost, even in the military. Mercedes, blank check here. What are we talking about? I mean, that's what's really scary. It's exactly right. And plus, there's no really benefit. There's the consumer confidence hasn't really moved in any way, unlike when when President Bush had, had gone into war in Iraq, there mm. was a boost of consumer confidence. There was a lot of infusion of American patriotism that affected the stocks. We have no, there's no effect whatsoever here. Well, Robert, it was sort of like a surprise war, you know, like one day we were not at war and the next day we were. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's caught a lot of people off guard. And, and keep in mind, all the other uh, flashpoints we've got going on around the globe now for investors in particular, you think about uh, anything from European debt concerns to uh, the unrest in, in other parts of Northern Africa and the Middle East. So there's a lot to focus on then to throw Japan and our own uncertain economy into the fire at once. So no doubt, uh, no surprise consumers aren't. But yeah, just as Paul was saying, $250 million we went through in five days just without blinking. That's just on missiles alone. So, you know, somewhat of a stimulus maybe for the defense uh, contractors uh, whose stocks yet aren't reflecting that. But this could be a real drain on the Treasury. Yeah, and that's your mine and yours taxpayer dollars. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next story we're looking at tonight. The nation's top aviation official says he suspended a control tower supervisor, supervisor that is, while investigating why no controller was available to aid two planes landing at Washington's Reagan Airport earlier this week. The NTSB just a few moments ago said the controller, who has 20 years of experience, fell asleep. Mercedes, what do you make of that? What very scary. Did anybody watch Pushing Tin? If you watch that movie where Peter people are chatting away, chatting away in the control room, suddenly the planes are flying in. They're like, oops, is there someone coming in on that runway? It's a very scary if, issue. It's certainly, they, they've done the right thing by making sure there's accountability because obviously there's lots of individuals and individuals' lives at hand. With those two commercial planes, mm -hmm. there's at least close to 300, 400 people on those planes. They could have lost their lives. And in Washington, I mean, that's the other thing, the nation's capital. Uh, very scary. That's scary. And anybody who's ever flown into Reagan Airport, you're flying in, you're in the city. I mean, it's a pretty seriously quick uh, descent into the city. And honestly, I, I give kudos to these pilots. They were the ones who were talking to each other, the pilots flying these, saying, all right, I'm going to go around. And they all communicated with each other. But this guy suspended, he should be fired. I mean, falling asleep, I don't care what the reason was, unless he had some kind of, you know, medical reason. There's the, I'm sorry, this is not a good thing. Robert, do you agree? Not a good thing? It's absolutely not a good thing. I mean, you know, they're talking about, you know, working four overnight shifts. Well, you know, Jerry, uh, all, most of us in this business have done more than four consecutive overnight shifts at some point in time, and yet, you know, your work still has to stay up at a certain level. It sadly cements the fact that if you are going at off hours or on vacation days, perhaps the holidays, uh, you're you're going to get the Z team uh, in there, and that uh, give, may give you pause for thought right. as to when you travel. Well, this guy had a lot of experience, 20 years of experience. It's it's, it's you know the good news here is that uh, nobody was hurt Absolutely. and it worked out okay. I got to tell you, four back-to-back -back overnights. I sure can't talk when on a regular day. <laughs> All right, our next story. Turns out medical marijuana is big business with sales topping $1.7 billion, and it's only legal people in 15 states. Its sales are rivaling those for Viagra, which are at $1.9 billion. Robert, this shocked me. I had no idea how big it was. Well, you know, and this is only tapping the legal market here, too. So I guess proponents are saying, you know, there's a, a much larger market out there. Some of them even touting the economic effects of uh, tax revenue for states who are strapped right now. So maybe it will be a boost. But, yeah, it is uh, sort of staggering to see it in those terms that uh, the legal amount is $1.7 here. And uh, so, yeah, not a huge surprise, I guess, in, in talking to some folks who in Colorado who actually work in that business, uh, which is now... A, gen a genuine legal business. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing to me, Paul. Were you surprised by the numbers? And, you know, at the end of the day, is this really a direction we want to go? I mean, why not? I think this is one of those things where it grows out of the ground. It's an amazing commodity, apparently. 1.7 million. I mean, let, let's try. Let's make some more money off of it. Let's see how big we can get this. If you legalize it nationally, I mean, that we're talking tens of billions, oh, hundreds oh, of billions. Oh, come on. Come on. Let's worry Mercedes, about money here. Come Mercedes, on. help me out here. You know, aren't there limits to capitalism, huh? 
Uh, well, it's funny because when I first saw that, I said, my goodness, so more people want to have, get the munchies instead of having sex. I was pretty surprised by it. <laughs> That's a good but point. But I, I have to agree. I have to agree. Certainly, there's a huge tax base. There's a huge tax benefit for all the states that may actually have legalized marijuana. And if you're talking about it in just a five-year span, they've got $9 billion. I think it's a, great, it's a great way to do it. All right. Here's an important story. A New York man arrived in court on a felony drunken driving charge. He was an hour and a half late drunk and carrying an open can of bush beer. The man had four unopened beer cans in his bag when he walked through the metal detector at the county courthouse. The judge uh, revoked his bail and sent him to jail. Mercedes, have you ever seen anything like this? I know you're an attorney. I, I tell you, I, I can't even imagine. Note to self, if you've got a pending DUI and you're going to be sentenced, don't show a pickup in and sort of swaggering into the courtroom <laughs> so it's obviously very apparent that you're drunk. No, I, and in 21 years of practice, I have never seen someone who's just so completely stupid. And I don't know whether he had legal aid. Obviously, he didn't have a private attorney, but his attorney definitely failed 101 where you don't have your partial <laughs> with that. I think he was representing himself. Come on. I mean, no <laughs> lawyer would have let that happen. I don't think. Maybe so. All right. Well, well yeah, we have to wrap knows. it up there tonight. Thanks, Robert, Mercedes, and Paul. We'll be right back with My Two Cents More.